Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie and today I am so excited to bring you the much anticipated series, Interior Design 101, a step-by-step -step guide to creating your dream space. If you remember from my previous video, I asked you to let me know in the comments whether or not you wanted me to break down the steps detail by detail. And the response was an astounding yes, so here we are. I hope you'll join me in the next few weeks as we tackle each step. I'll be talking about everything from how your home needs to function, where to look for inspiration, how to find your style, how to develop a cohesive color palette, where to shop, how to purchase, and finally how to style your space. The end result will be a cohesive space, a custom design to suit your needs and your style, all within budget and helps you to aspire the life that you dream of living. Before we get started, please take a moment to give this video a thumbs up, make sure to comment below with any design dilemmas you currently have, and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can hit that little bell to get notified of new videos that we drop every Tuesday. So if you are undergoing a whole house renovation or simply making over one room in your home, you will get a ton of my tried and true tips as I break down the creative process for you in this video. This video is step one in my creative process. It is determining how you want the space to function. Form follows function, says the late great architect Louis Sullivan. This basically means that the shape of a building or object should relate to its primary function or use. You're probably asking, how hard is it to figure out the function of a room? A bedroom needs a bed, a dining room needs a table and chairs, a living room may be a sofa and a coffee table. But design is so much more than that. As you guys know, I specialize in custom home design and I deal with a lot of really big budgets for my clients. Imagine if I told them, put this table here, put this chair there, buy this bed without explaining its intended function and purpose. So for this initial step, there are some key questions you must ask yourself before embarking on your interior design. Number one, what are you doing in the space? How do you imagine the space to function? The first thing I ask my clients is, what do you do in here? How do you live? Off the bat, if it's difficult for you to answer that question, just imagine what you do on a typical weekend. When your workday stops on Friday evening, all the way up until Monday morning before you go back to work. You'll want to break down the tasks and the hobbies that you like to do, and then finally figure out all the different furniture pieces that will help support your needs. This is an example from my Hacienda Heights project. It was a custom home design that we built from the ground up. But what I want to discuss today is the living room. Since we're building the space from the ground up, we literally just had one blank, huge space to work with. The clients entertained a lot, so he needed a space that would seat at least 20 people in this living space. Now, I know that's not realistic. I mean, clearly even my own living room can only hold a sofa and two little chairs, but I had to get to work and figure out what was the best way that I was going to optimize the space of this room for my client. I developed a space plan where we flanked two large sofas facing each other. I also designed four club chairs for individual seating. The client was very particular in the fact that he wanted people to have individual seats as well as group seating and a combination of both for families and large groups. At the time, the clients also had young twins that they were raising. They wanted the babies to be able to crawl all over the space without any hard surfaces. So the challenge was also finding coffee tables without any hard edges. So while you understand the function of the room, we need seating, we need coffee tables, and we need a soft surface. You also need to understand your functional needs so the furniture works in your favor and functions exactly as you need it to. Next, we'll be breaking down the principal bedroom of my La Crescenta project. We were working with a pretty sizable space. The client was a brand new mom, so not only did she need a bed and typical nightstands with storage underneath, but she also needed a place to read, relax, and pump. I divided the bedroom up into two zones, one for sleeping and one for lounging and relaxing. The sleeping portion was anchored by a beautifully tufted headboard flanked by really modern nightstands with soft closing drawers. On the lounge side, I specified this really beautiful chase lounge. Not only was it the perfect place to chill and relax, but it also became the most comfortable spot for hours and hours of pumping. Once you understand the key function of each individual space, you'll be able to furnish it with confidence and ease. Here are a few other common examples so you understand the functional needs of your space. Do you love to unwind at the end of a night with a book and a glass of wine? In this case, you want to determine the optimum piece of furniture that will support this need. 
Consider a chaise or a lounge with an ottoman so you can kick back your feet. Make sure you also have a little table that's set to the side. It's a perfect spot for a reading lamp or a surface for you to put down your phone. Another example is a living room that needs to work in multifunctional ways. Do you cook in the kitchen and need to watch your kids as they're playing in the living room? Perhaps you want to look for low back furniture, like a sectional or low sofa. That way you're able to peer into the living room and see what the kids are up to. You might also want to source a coffee table without any hard edges so that the kids don't accidentally hit their heads on it. Bonus points if it's light enough that you can move in and out of the living room when you need to. Example 3. Your dining room also serves as a work from home office since you don't have an extra room to work in. In this case, you may want to use the buffet or credenza as a printer station or somewhere to file all your papers away. Ultimately, the key is to consider your lifestyle and what you plan to do in the space. Space planning tip number one, brainstorm functional zones for your space and section into categories according to your needs. Number two, start listing items that you need to furnish that zone. Number three, prioritize your needs versus your wants. Let's use a dining table for example. Do you love marble but afraid of maintaining it? If you're afraid of spills, scratches, or you don't know how to properly seal it yourself, then you might want to consider wood instead. That is a difference between a want and a need. Number four, think about how you currently live and envision the life that you've always dreamed of living. If you have a small bedroom with not a lot of furniture in it and the bed was passed down through generations and it really doesn't suit your style, that is a prime example of simply using what you have. But does it inspire you? Is it your dream bed that you've always envisioned sleeping in? If not, it's time to consider how you imagine yourself living versus how you currently live now. Remember that the more planning and prep work you do for the design, the better the outcome will be. Design for the life that you want, not the the life that you currently have. Not only does this method make your money and efforts totally worth it, but you'll be so much more inspired to go out there and chase your dreams if your space just instantly uplifts you. I hope you got some good tips out of this video, how to determine the function of your space. Join me next week as I break down the number one most popular video request I've received to date, how to find your style. Next week will be filled with how to find inspiration, widow down your style, and get to designing a dream space that looks and feels like you. If you like this type of content, please give this video a thumbs up, comment below and let me know if you need help in trying to determine the primary function of your space. Feel free to share the content if you know anyone who needs design help. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.